and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonino and Tosha with UATV. With the development of digital technologies, information is rapidly becoming the most important currency of mankind. Whoever has the information has also the influence on hearts and minds of people around the globe. Unfortunately, twisted or incomplete information can be used to manipulate not just ordinary people but entire nations. The most vivid example of this is Russia's information war against Ukraine. For the last six years, Kremlin's information attacks have been among the biggest threats to Ukraine's sovereignty. So what needs to be done to counter the hybrid information war more effectively. To talk more about this, we we'll welcome to our studio today Yevhen Fetchenko. He's the co-founder of StopFake.org. Hello and thank you for joining yes. us. So first of all, let's talk about the negative effect of uh, such a thing as information propaganda. Yeah, I'm, as you rightly mentioned, Ukraine is already subjected to information war for the last six years, and the main purpose of this war is to change the way how people perceive what's mm -hmm. going on around them and what kind of uh, uh, political decision-making uh, is based on that wrong perception of the reality. Right. So what Stop Fake is doing is trying to uh, find what the main narrative of disinformation are, what the impact of disinformation on Ukraine is, and basically how to tackle it, and to make sure that people are not uh, influenced by propaganda and disinformation, and to make sure that uh, other countries does not influence the way how Ukraine perceives the surrounding world. Is Ukraine the only country that is right now being a target to disinformation, to informational propaganda, or uh, did the world have such examples before Ukraine and we just didn't pay attention until it actually happened to us? Of course, disinformation is not new, but what is new is the scale of, of, uh, of the war. And Ukraine became one of the very first places where this very scale was uh, uh, demonstrated. And in Ukrainian case, also information warfare overlaps with uh, kinetic warfare mm -hmm. happening in the east of Ukraine. So from this point of view, Ukraine is quite a unique place to see how this uh, war is uh, conducted in the kind of modern condition of modern uh, warfare and also what, what the impact of uh, this war is. And uh, also, uh, uh, Ukraine is not the only place where it's happening, uh, but the difference might be the platforms which are used to, mm -hmm. to uh, deliver uh, disinformation messages or the intensity of the war. But uh, we've been arguing since uh, 2014 that Ukraine is not uniquely the place to, to find this, and Ukraine should not only uh, be the place where to tackle disinformation. So it's, it's happening in many other countries. Right when we see Russia trying to influence elections and uh, influence demonstrations and uh, other things, which actually influence and the national politics in, in, in many places, mm -hmm. referendums and many other things. So it's very, very important to understand this kind of, kind of the huge scale of this and also to understand that you cannot tackle it just in one place. Taking a look at the channels that the information attacks are, are being made through, these days, right now, uh, in the modern world, online or printed media, TV and radio, which is the most dynamic channel? Yeah, I think everything. Uh, you can weaponize. In collaboration. Yeah, you can weaponize basically anything you have yeah. uh, because uh, disinformation, Russian disinformation is very uh, flexible and is very... Uh, and is always looking for new ways to, to influence minds mm -hmm. of people. So if some channels are closing down, like Russian TV channels that are not available in Ukraine anymore, they immediately started to look for the new venues how to deliver those messages. And of course, then social media became one of the most important places where you right. uh, conduct that war. When Russian social media became less available, they immediately switched to Facebook and other kind of international mm -hmm. platforms. And then finally, they started to look for Ukrainian domestic media outlets 
If you cannot uh, penetrate the, the national information space from outside, definitely the answer is you really need to look for uh, places inside the system which are kind of a weak places and you can exploit mm -hmm. them to deliver your messages. So again, we, uh, Stop Fake was uh, uh, kind of uh, dealing with all types of fakes. We texture, video, photos, and they've been disseminated through any channel you might imagine. We've even been dealing with uh, forged documents, forged books, and fake experts. So basically you can make fake anything these days. And the question is, uh, if uh, audiences in Ukraine or in other places really understand that there are so many opportunities to influence their uh, opinion about what's going on, and how they answer those challenges. Is there a certain algorithm that helps those who seek uh, reliable information to actually uh, make out uh, fake news? How do, you, how do you realize that you're reading a fake, or watching a fake, or listening to a fake? Yeah, that's actually one of our objectives as a fact-checker, so we really want to spread that culture of fact-checking not only to, to journalistic community, but also to outside, and basically we are saying anyone can become fact checkers this day, and we explain instruments which can be useful. Right, because we journalists have the first rule: doubt everything. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, for for common users of the Ukrainian population, there should be check everything. Right. How? Yeah. So we explain very basic instruments: what is usually manipulated and how you can avoid being manipulated. You, for example, you really need to read the whole story because most people, for example, are reading only headlines. Mm. Uh, many, many people or too many are sharing their stories on social media accounts even without opening it, without mm -hmm. reading it. So that means that they are sharing fake information and fake information basically is growing around ourselves very, very quickly. And it occupies uh, the major, major part of uh, a media ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The more disinformation you have, the less space you have for the real journalism. So if we would persuade people to be more critical, and it's not about uh, not trusting media, it's the opposite. So we really need to make people trust into media, but they also should be aware that not all media are equal and not everything which is distributed and circulated around them is actually media. So we want to explain this to people that you really need to have trusted sources. Even if this information is coming from trusted sources, please spend one minute. Sometimes you just need to, you know, mm -hmm. click and open the new window and check information very, very quickly. Even if people would go to the places like Wikipedia, they can immediately find some very basic answers. And the same with photos, with videos. Of course, you need to be an expert sometimes, right. but sometimes you can verify it very easily. Okay, let's say that this goal is pretty achievable on mainland Ukraine. Let's talk about the territories that are temporarily not under governmental control. Luhansk, Donetsk regions. How do you reach people there? How do you explain the need of fact-checking to the people that currently reside in those territories? Yeah, uh, first of all, they really need to get a lot of information from Ukrainian side. And of course, we know that Russia is trying to prevent that. And the whole space over the information space is filled with different Russian so-called media outlets. Mm -hmm. And this is the point. So we really need to de deliver as much information as possible, including those messages I already mentioned that you really need to check all the information you're consuming. Mm -hmm. You should not take it at a face value. And you really need to build the number of you know trusted sources you uh, you really need to have the list of trusted journalists you rely on and getting mm -hmm. your information. And so the more information people would have, the more possibility they would try to be kind of more critical and more selective in what, uh, what they consume. For example, we've been publishing a newspaper which was called Your Right to Know and we distributed it across the contact line and we've been explaining the same things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm that uh, basically giving people the very basics of media literacy and trying to, again, to engage them in this conversation uh, about uh, media. Mm -hmm. In general, how vulnerable is Ukrainian population towards uh, disinformation that comes from the Kremlin? Uh, 
we conducted a couple of years ago, we conducted survey across Ukraine and asked people if they consider Russian disinformation to be a, a danger for them. And 58 percent uh, said yes. And they've been referring to the sources we already discussed today, like Russian television, Russian social right. media, Russian uh, so-called news websites. So on one hand, you have this basic understanding. On another hand, uh, this uh, we have uh, the remaining 42 percent. I think this is exactly the target audience we need to work uh, very hard mm -hmm. with to change their minds as well. How should we how should we work with that remaining 42 percent of the audience? Uh, again, we need to raise their awareness all the time because it can actually fluctuate today they understand the mm -hmm. problem better mm -hmm. and then uh, the uh, situation can change very quickly. Also, we need to keep uh, Russian so-called media away from Ukrainian media market. They should not be available over here. Uh, and uh, also we need to do more media literacy. Since started with schools as we do more and more now, but also do media literacy for adults and explain all those things, uh, basically like ABCs of media literacy to, to all uh, potential audiences involved. I totally agree. Thank you so much for coming yeah, here thanks today. A lot for having me. That was Yevgen Fatchenko. He's the co-founder of StopFake.org. You've been watching Head to Head. My name is Antonina Antosha. Stay tuned to Zuma TV.